In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a custom alert component that looks like this using Svelte and Tailwind CSS. What's up everyone and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is James Q. Quick and I do weekly videos about web development related topics and I am a huge fan of Svelte as a framework. I'm a big fan of React as well, but Svelte has a special place in my heart for some of the simplicity and things that are built in that just make building applications so much easier. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna do something uh, where we're gonna build a custom component. This is an alert component if you wanna pop up an alert box on the top of your application and you want to pop that up from different parts of your application from different components. So we're gonna have a centralized store to keep the state of that alert and then be able to display it whenever we want to and make it disappear. So this is part of a, a bigger project that I was working on, which was to build a Wordle clone was felt. I've got a video that you can check out if you wanna know more about how I did that. And then lastly, I've got an entire course coming out with my podcast co-host, Amy Dutton, at the end of July called Everything Svelte at everythingsvelte.com to learn how to use Svelte and Superbase and Stripe and automated tests and a bunch of different things. So keep an eye out for that. Go check it out at Everything Svelte. And uh, that said, let's go ahead and actually get into this. So I'm gonna start with uh, the instructions on tailwindcss.com. So they've got great guides to get started with any framework and set up Tailwind. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna copy uh, this npm init command. Uh, this is gonna create the directory. So I'm gonna put this inside of custom svelte alert directory. This is gonna create a new svelte project. We'll say, uh, yes, we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, actually, this is gonna be svelte kit specifically. If you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments below. And uh, we're gonna do a, actually, let's just take their demo app and then we can add our alert to their demo app. Uh, so we won't, do, uh, we won't do any type checking. We'll kind of skip that for now. Uh, we can add ESLint and Prettier, that's fine. Playwright, no, uh, and then we're uh, good to go. So let's go ahead and move into the custom Svelte alert directory. Let's do an NPM install to make sure that we install all those packages. And then what we should see if I refresh uh, we should should be already inside of this directory. Uh, so this should uh, be ready to go. So let's go back. There's a few different steps, uh, a few different things we have to copy. Uh, I'm gonna copy this command and then this command and then uh, this command. This is all just boilerplate stuff to set up Tailwind. So uh, I've got a multiple history clipboard where I can paste these in one at a time. Super helpful. One of the biggest tips I have for you is to get a multiple history clipboard. Uh, so we have that one and then we'll have uh, this one. So the first one is installing uh, Tailwind CSS and Auto Prefixer and Post CSS and Svelte Preprocess. This just helps uh, tie in the build process of Tailwind into the build process uh, and the auto reloading process of, uh, of Svelte here. So then we create our Tailwind config file and then uh, we need to rename this. I forget exactly why this is, but we need to, oh, it's something to do with um, to uh, to make this be common JS files uh, or tagging this as common JS. Uh, did we finish post CSS config dot? Oh, it looks like it already created it as uh, CJS4. So it actually did exactly what we wanted by default. Cool. Uh, so that is good. Maybe they need to update their instructions now with the latest uh, version of one of these things. Uh, inside of Svelte config, let's go into Svelte config. And I just copied that whole thing, but I don't think we need the whole thing. We need the uh, config and we need to add the pre-process part. So let's copy the pre-process part and then paste this into uh, the Svelte config. So we've got kit and then I think that just goes in there. So pre-process, this is saying that we wanna run post CSS uh, during that pre-process. And uh, cool, so that should be good. And did I actually import this thing as well? Let's make sure we did import pre-process. This should go at the beginning. All right, so there that is. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space in here too. Let's minimize that, cool. And uh, one of the last things is to uh, tell, tell Tailwind uh, what files to be looking at. So the content I will paste in here, it's a regex uh, basically, or some sort of pattern patching or pattern matching. It may not be regex, but uh, it's saying all HTML.js, .svelte and .ts files is where uh, we can look for uh, Tailwind stuff. And then we're going to uh, add our app CSS. So inside of source, we can, uh, we already have app, CM, app CSS. So let's actually just take out uh, all of that. Some of that stuff is gonna look ugly, which is fine. 
Uh, and then there that is. And then lastly, inside of our routes uh, and then index.js uh, file, uh, or actually we wanna do this inside of the layout file. So layout is gonna be kind of the container of everything. We already have one here um, and uh, we've already got it imported. I'm new to this, uh, to the actual Svelkit demo that already exists. So let's actually see what this looks like. Uh, so npm run dev is how we're gonna run this. By default, this should be available to us at uh, local host 3000. So we should see, here's what the demo looks like. That's fine, that's not super important. But now we're gonna add this, uh, this alert idea. So let's go into, uh, I guess we could do lib and then uh, do a, um, an alert.svelte file. So the alert is gonna be uh, relatively simple. Um, it is going to, let's just start with a markup. So we'll have a div and inside of this div, we wanna have, uh, we wanna have a, um, the actual alert message. So uh, I did this as a span, it looks like. Uh, I don't know why I did this as a span, but it, it doesn't really matter what it is. And we're gonna set this to a property of alert message. So we can come up to our script and inside of here have alert message equals, we'll hard code this as first. Um, hey, something went wrong, for example. All right, so there's that. And then we wanna display the actual uh, alert message. Do I need to prefix this with const? There we go. So there's our alert message. We'll bring this in from a store here in a second. And then we can just go ahead and give some styles in here. So we'll do um, height of 10, uh, margin Y of six. Then we'll have the actual span itself and inside of here, we'll set uh, the class to a few different things. And I'm gonna do some in variable interpolation in this. So I'm doing brackets and then uh, back ticks uh, for the time being. We're gonna start with text gray of 900. We'll do text center, we'll do rounded, medium, we'll do border, red that doesn't actually sound right uh we'll do some padding we'll come back to that so padding uh four and then margin bottom of four as well and then we'll have the alert message inside of this we can format this a little bit better and now let's just go i guess that formatted for us whatever uh let's just go into our layout and we'll just put this right in the in the uh, at the top of uh of the main inside of, or right before the slot slot uh, so we'll bring in the alert component. And now let's just see, this will look um, kind of ugly. So, hey, something went wrong. It's right below the nav bar above the kind of title thing there, which is totally fine. Uh, what we really want though, is if we don't have an alert for this to not show. So if we, uh, if we kind of uh, not define this, uh, can I not do that? Uh, if I do it as null to start, so alert message equals null, and then I can do a check. And I've got um, I've got some shortcuts in here from an extension, which is really nice to help write this condition out. So if uh, alert message, if there is an alert message, then we actually want to show the span. So we should see now if we save this while alert message is null, uh, that that goes away. The message does, but if we look, we gave it a height, so it's still going to take up its necessary space, which is actually what we want. So there is that alert. Uh, it's not going to have a text until you actually add something, uh, but it does take up space, which is good. Uh, cool. So the other thing we want to do is we want to have a uh, a status for the alert. We want to have different types of success and danger, et cetera. So um, let's go ahead and create. Um, I'm not sure. I would usually create like a stores uh, file in here, but we can skip that for now. And I'll just have an alert store.js. Now stores in uh, SvelteKit are a basically centralized place to store stuff and then access that stuff. And oftentimes you'll see that we use writables. Uh, this is something that can be uh, read and written to from different components, which is really nice. So this is gonna come from Svelte store. And I'm gonna create uh, what essentially is an enum in, uh, in JavaScript. Uh, it doesn't exactly exist in JavaScript, uh, but it does in, um, in TypeScript. Uh, but we can kind of fake it here with this object. And we're basically just creating key value pairs for um, for the different uh, alert types that we can have. And then after we finish that, we call object.freeze, which will uh, just make sure that these things can't be changed. So they're mutable and they're gonna stay the same. 
Uh, and then we want to have two different writable pieces. So there's two pieces of information that we want to have access to in our alert component. We can uh, have the alert message. We're going to export this and mark this as a writable. This is going to make it accessible to be read and to be written to from other components. And then we also want to have an alert type uh, like this. And that's going to start off as empty as well. And then we're going to have one function in here that we can call from our different components to update this. So we're going to say expert or export uh, const display alert. And this is going to take in a message uh, type and the default is going to be alert types dot info. So see how uh, we can use that variable to now um, not have to hard code what the alert type is. We can get it from that uh, from that enum. And then we'll have a reset time, which is basically an amount of time before we uh, remove that if we want to. All right, cool. So uh, inside of here, uh, we're just basically going to take those parameters and we're going to update our um, our pieces of state, our writables that we're tracking. So we'll set the alert message to message. We'll set the uh, alert type to the uh, alert or just type. And then what we're going to do is our component is only going to display if we actually have a message. So if there is a reset time, if we want uh, this thing to automatically go away, we can call set time out, pass this our callback function, set the time to the reset time. This would be in milliseconds. So a thousand milliseconds would be a second. And then inside of here uh, to make the uh, alert just kind of disappear, we can set uh, the alert message to nothing. So we set the alert alert message to whatever the message is. We then set timeout for three seconds, for example, and then set it back to nothing, which makes it then disappear, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that should be everything in our alert store. Again, we have our enum here for the different alert types. We freeze that so we can't mess with it. We have two pieces of state that we want as writables, alert message and alert type. And we have a function called display alert. This is the function that we can access uh, anywhere to be able to uh, to be able to update this stuff accordingly. So uh, what we'll do is actually reference these values inside of the alert component now. So I'm going to uh, import all of those things. Uh, so we uh, import alert type and alert or alert types and alert type and alert message. So we grab all of those. We can get rid of this alert message and then to actually reference the value of alert message, uh, we get the value with the dollar sign. So when you have a writable, you use the dollar sign to grab the actual message. So what we should see if we save this and things work, which they may not, uh, let's go and see what we have wrong here. Oh, I think this is in uh, wrong directory. Sorry, I copied that in. So uh, this would be inside of the same directory inside of lib directory, I believe. So let's see if that is the right import like this. Looks like uh, no. Oh, I think I let's see. So this one and that one like this. So current directory, not back out of directory. And does that work? Yes, it does. So we should see nothing has changed. It uh, has the empty div here where it's not actually showing because we don't have a message. If we were to come into the store and set the message to something happened. Now uh, we should be able to see that this will uh, display. So we see that pop up there. So something happened and actually shows that text, which is good. All right, so we have these pieces in place. The one other thing we want to do is calculate the background for this. So we want to have three different background types. And uh, we're going to do this with kind of a computed property. So we're going to have this interesting syntax of dollar sign and then colon. And then we'll call this uh, BG class and then it'll be a function. And I'm going to kind of copy in the logic and then we'll just talk about this. So I'm going to paste this end. So basically what we're doing is checking the alert type. If it is of type success, we're going to set the background color to BG green. If it's danger, we'll set it to red. If it is uh, none of those, then we'll just set it to gray. So that'll be kind of be the info there. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll call this function inside of the class and we'll do this with uh, our dollar sign bracket since we're in inside of uh, backticks and then we'll call BG class. So whatever that thing returns, it's going to input in here as a um, as a string or excuse me, as a class. So. It uh, looks like we have some sort of error. Let's see what that is. 
And I think we have a typo here. So this should actually be alert type. And uh, this should be singular. So we'll see now if we have any better luck. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And it looks like it's coming through. So it's kind of hard to see. This is, uh, this is gray. Uh, so you can see that would be kind of info. We could make this be, if we did uh, a blue for info, for example, uh, then we'll see this comes out at blue. That may make more sense. And uh, now what we can do is inside of, let's say, I think there is a counter component in here. Uh, let's say that when we click uh, on this, let's call, uh, let's see, which one? That's decrease. So uh, let's do const decrease equals and then we're going to have this function call uh, decrease so I'm going to pass this in and we're going to run this logic to say count is going to decrease but in addition to that now we're going to set an alert um, so we'll call the decrease function we'll let's actually check um, if the count is already at zero then we want to set alert, uh, set message. Let's see what that function is called. So inside of our alert store, we want to call the display alert. So let's call display alert. That should auto import, by the way. So it's importing display alert up here. And we'll call uh, display alert and can't subtract um, from zero, maybe. I don't know. And then uh, we'll have alert type dot danger. So this will be a red one. So let's see if this one will work. Now, again, we're in a separate component, but it's calling into the store, which is then uh, the store information is being used by the alert component itself. Uh, so if we try to, uh, okay, so we see this actually coming. Uh, we need to return, but you see this is, I don't know why these buttons disappeared, uh, but you see that it's showing this message, which is cool. Now, the other thing that we can do, uh, one, let's do a return here. So we only subtract if we can. And then uh, let's do another thing where we pass in uh, 2000 milliseconds. And that means that this is going to disappear after it shows. So it should show that something happened originally. That's the default thing. If we do the minus, it should show uh, the flash. And then it goes back to undefined, which is OK. Um, but our alert component should just check um, only if there is an alert message. So I'm not sure why undefined would, uh, oh, that's because this should be that. Uh, so you always have to reference the value with a writable uh, using that dollar sign syntax. So now it should show and then it should just disappear in here a second. So that's, uh, that's where we have the ability to actually um, uh, show the message and have it disappear completely. And then lastly, if we come back into the counter, uh, we could do something else. So we could say uh, const increase uh, is this. And we could say if if count, count is four, uh, that means the next one is going to be five. Then, uh, or maybe let's go ahead and just increase. So let's say, oops, sorry. Let's say we want to increase uh, count equals count plus one. If that then equals five, we can uh, say display alert and say, congrats, you hit the highest number. I don't know, that seems kind of cheesy. Uh, but then this one will be good. So we'll do alert type dot success. That should be green. And then we'll have, we can just leave that up as a flash. So uh, we need to come and uh, change this button to be uh, increased. So this one should call our new increase function. And again, I'm not sure why these buttons are invisible, but if we do minus, uh, it should say can't subtract from zero. Cool. If we do plus, it goes to one, two, three, four. And now we should see our alert message showing up here. Uh, so this is uh, a really cool way to have, uh, and it doesn't uh, disappear because we didn't pass a reset time. But if we did back down to here, now the reset will kick in and it'll go away. You could also add a close button on this and all the things that you want to. Uh, but this is a really cool way to have a centralized store for your alert information to be able to call to it from any different component or page that you want to. And then inside of the alert component, pull the actual message and alert type and display that appropriately. So I thought this was a cool uh, demo to show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions about uh, how to create custom components in Svelte or something like that, let me know in the comments below. 
If you're more interested in Svelte, check out everythingsvelte.com. Thanks for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one.